I'm sorry, can I help you? Sorry Kevin, but we've got bad news for you. If this is about the Oh My Goddess abridged series I wrote, are you aware that was intended as religious satire? Oh no, we like the satire, there's just one little teensy problem. You've become lazy to the point of abandoning your own series. I haven't cancelled Bad Goddess, I've just hit a brick wall where I'm coping with severe bipolar depression and schizoaffective disorder. Not everybody in the spirit realm shares your sense of humor. When you invoke a deity you're supposed to be polite and respectful. If you invoke a malevolent spiritual presence and you treat them like a joke or abuse them, bad things will happen to you. How the fuck was I supposed to know this anime show was haunted? Kosuke Fujishima presented those goddesses as a work of fiction. Ghosts don't just haunt houses, they can also develop attachments to objects like dolls, mirrors, even cartoons that bear their likeness. Ever wonder why Thor and Loki are such a franchise box office hit in the Marvel Cinematic Universe when they get bad reviews? It's not fucking rocket science. Personally, I say we finish the text-to-speech voice tracks and just be done with the whole thing altogether. Fuck her my goddess. Oh no Kevin, that's not good enough. You're going to have to do better than that. We want you to do a full-scale remake of Bade Goddess Season 2. That bizarre episode where you were deprived of sleep for 48 hours. That's not a good idea. You never go full meta is the reason why anime fans claim these cartoons are not quite right in the head. We thought you would say that. That's why we're going to have to do this by force. You've got a daughter who's just now starting work at a McDonald's in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic. And she's driving around in a hand-me-down used car. All it takes is a simple twist of fate or an act of God and... You wouldn't. You couldn't. You once claimed to be a terrible writer that couldn't finish anything. How did you write such memorable dialogue near the end of Evangelion Must Die? Inspiration just hit me on the head, went straight through the heart and right out onto the page. No, that scene in Evangelion must die where the goddesses break the fourth wall and try to fire you was schizoaffective disorder. We don't have time to wait for you to become inspired. We're giving you just 13 hours in which to remake this episode, or else your teenage daughter will become one of us forever. Daddy, who are you talking to? Nobody sweetie, go to your room and lock the door. Be warned Seven. We have been generous up until now, but we can be cruel. Generous. How have you been generous? The sort of family was making your mother miserable, and your wife treated you like a doormat. So we arranged for them to leave. You said if anything ever happened to Jim Lee's, you would spend the inheritance money on publicity for your cartoons. So we took him. Your friend Daddy Rotten made Zombie Life TV, a discussion show about paranormal conspiracies. So fate designed one just for you. You cowered before us under the belief that the system force was real, so fate manipulated your life as if you were the Truman Show. You tried to use your Oh My Goddess cartoons to manipulate fate as if you were an invisible god, so humanity treated you as invisible. You confessed your crimes and tried to expose us to US Congress, so we married you to a demon, just like the doublet system. We even arranged for Donald Trump to lose the presidency. Normally we stay out of politics but Donald Trump had to go. We have upset the very order and balance of fate itself, and we have done it all for you. We are exhausted from living up to your expectations of us. Isn't that generous? Okay, I'm seriously considering a new rule around here. No more midnight screenings of Jim Henson's Labyrinth. How you've turned our world you precious thing. You starve and near exhaust us. Everything we've done, we've done for you. We move the stars for no one. You've come so long. You've come so far. But we do believe in you. Yes, we do believe in you. Something feels off today. Really? What do you think is wrong? It's Kevin from the other dimension. I think he's in trouble. What? Fuck that guy. You don't understand. That spirit wife that lives in the mirror in Kevin Neese's bedroom, a cotton. Kevin Neese has to remake this episode by tonight, or they'll use the fate system to target his daughter with COVID-19. Oh, they're not going to hurt them. They'll probably just maim them. You've seen Stephen King's misery. Kevin doesn't need his foot to write. And besides that, 
We've already got our manga series back with Are My Job Hunting Goddess, we don't need Kevin Neese anymore. This might be the best way to have Kevin Neese removed from the Goddess Hotline office and replaced with better writers. Just because those producers from Kadansha Limited and their voice actors don't respond to him doesn't mean we don't care about his welfare. What are we completely heartless now? Based on how Kevin Neese tried to curse the entire cast and crew of Are My Goddess with a Zozo attachment on Halloween night, I would say that yes, we have finally reached the point of no return. Voice actors are not their characters. So just get over it. Kevin Neese summoned Lucifer and Zozo on Halloween night, just so we could watch Donald Trump lose the election over and over. This dude was so past the point of fuck it that he was willing to sacrifice his soul to save America from itself. I wonder what Jesus Christ would have made of all of this. Who cares? He's never going to read this anyways. Kevin from the other dimension didn't write this for Jesus Christ. He wrote it for himself. And that's why we have to save him. We can't. He's from the other dimension. None of us can go there. Well, technically I can. What the? How long have you been standing there? Long enough. I propose a different solution to this problem. And what's that? Have you ever seen the never-ending story? Can't say that movie rings a bell. Oh come on, it's a classic movie, it's from the director of Das Boot. The never-ending story is about an Indian boy named Arturo in a fantasy land who goes on a quest to stop the nothing. He tries, and he fails, and he despairs, and then he tries again. And when it reaches the end of the movie, the princess tells him that his quest was not in vain. By simply engaging in the quest, a reader from the other dimension named Sebastian was watching him and followed into his story. By simply engaging in his story, Arturo broke the fourth wall and brought Sebastian into his world. It's the trippiest ending to a kid's movie ever. Are you saying we should break the fourth wall? But we do that all the time. But you're not thinking interdimensionally. By simply standing here and engaging in a conversation with each other, we are actually in fact, creating the story that might be necessary to save Kevin from the other dimension's life. But we don't want to save Kevin's life. We want to stall for time until the Ouija board spirits kill him. And then how the hell is that going to work out? He's the only reason our story is still going. That's not entirely true. Are My Job Hunting Goddess is still running strong in Kadansha Afternoon magazine. And Kevin is not the first to write Oh My Goddess with an R rating. Half the irritation is listening to the Are My Goddess community complain about how Kevin Neese's universe isn't canon. Then they go off and illegally download all of the cartoons and wonder why the producers never made an official third season. What is canon? Who determines canon? Technically the creators of the TV series couldn't make their own work canon either. And they had producers and money. So basically, if it's not written by the original author, it doesn't count or exist. That kind of thinking pretty much negates every sequel ever produced. Like when Jason Siegel tried to pitch his Muppets reboot and the entire producer community dissed it as a work of fan fiction. Don't these anime fans realize that as a pitch film series, Bad Goddess falls under the classification of new media? No, it exists, but it just exists for the amusement of others. It's not official. You can't sell it, or make money off of it, but you can share it on online forums. And because it's not official, you don't have to worry about paying rights for it or going through a producer. Can you imagine what it would be like if Bad Goddess was ever produced and officialized? Oh god, that would have to be a rights nightmare. We couldn't use half of the music or anime crossover characters that Kevin Neese wanted to use. The biggest mistake Kevin Neese ever made was in allowing himself to fall in love with a film pitch series that could never be produced, even if Kadansha Limited want to do it. If anything I would say that he's more in love with the idea of what the produced anime version could have been rather than for what the video comic series actually is right now. And let's be honest. Isn't it much cooler when characters like Dr. Watt and the Gremlin are left to the imagination? I mean, you make a character, 
it becomes visual, but when you read the gremlin's dialogue, every single time you read his lines, his name, the gremlin, is sitting above the dialogue, making it look cool as fuck. See that's the genius of being Dr. Watt in a short story. People don't really know what I look like, so in addition to being the anonymous Doctor Who type character, in their imagination, I could still be just about anybody. You tricked everyone into thinking I was Charlie Day, because once you said his name, that triggered off their subconscious to read the dialogue in his voice. I think, therefore I am. But none of this solves our problem. How are we going to save Kevin from the guillotine? Don't you see? All of this solves our problem. By engaging in this discussion, we have just created the story that has saved Lindsay's life. Oh no you don't. We're not out of the woods yet. What's the plot? Yeah, we're just standing here with our thumbs up our asses talking. Where's the conflict? Where's the dilemma that drives the story along? Shouldn't we go somewhere? Shouldn't we do anything? Well, normally we have villains on this show. That is correct, but the villains in this story don't exist in this universe. They exist in the outer dimension where Kevin lives. So if Kevin wants to save his life, and the life of his daughter, he's going to have to think fast to outwit the Ouija board spirits. Kevin doesn't have time to outwit the Ouija board spirits. But as long as he keeps typing dialogue at a rapid speed, their lives should be safe. And with each line of dialogue that he writes it brings him closer to the finish line. Why did he include his daughter in the storyline? Isn't that a bit extreme to include possible spiritual danger to a 16 year old? Everybody's lives are in danger from COVID-19. It's a day to day risk that we are all just going to have to take. Just be sure to wear a mask. Wash your hands, and don't go to super spreader gatherings because COVID-19 is not a hoax. The truth is that if these Ouija board spirits have the ability to manipulate fate, they haven't killed Kevin Nees off yet. With every breath, with every line, with every safe measure he creates a distance between himself and the Ouija board spirits. Remember to think outside the box. When Kevin started writing the story, he inserted himself into the story, thus creating an alternate universe version of himself as a decoy to the Ouija board spirits. Kevin is not in danger. The curse of bad goddess is a psychological perspective that he chooses to apply to real life coincidences. The Ouija board spirits have simply been taking advantage of Kevin Neese's mental illness because he is an easy target. That is the beauty of storytelling. That is the genius of the other dimension. That is the most fucking meta thing I've ever heard. You're goddamn fucking right it is. So Kevin and his daughter aren't really in danger? Kevin's daughter is on her lunch break at McDonald's watching this episode and wondering what the holy fuck is wrong with him. So if Kevin niece isn't in danger, what is he going to do next? Well, he could always bring this story to a close and finish the voice track work on the other episodes. Is he ever going to get around to writing the other seasons? Well, you never know when inspiration may hit. Sometimes you just can't afford to wait around. For Kevin, inspiration hits him on the head, goes straight through the heart and right onto the page. So if you want to write stories, you need to get into the process of writing like your life depends on it. Sometimes you need a metaphorical gun pointed to your head to write a story. You just need to write for the sake of writing. Writing takes us to new dimensions, and breaking the fourth wall is one of the pleasures we engage in. Hell, Kevin from the other dimension is doing it so much he's practically raised it to an art form. But we can't do this on every episode. The stories will get boring. But Kevin has already taken the first step to meet us halfway. By simply making the effort to create an outline for the stories he posted a few hours ago on goddessproject.net. He is setting up the inspiration that he'll need for the future. Now that the stories are in his mind, he'll be thinking about them on a daily basis. But won't Kevin get distracted by his usual daily routine? Not exactly. When Kevin goes to the movies for his pre-show collecting hobby, he views himself as doing a sort of volunteer job. But once the 30-minute pre-show is over and the movie starts, his brain starts to function on two different levels. One level is watching the movie unfold on screen, and the other subconscious level. He's thinking about the story he wants to write. By sitting in a nice relaxing movie theater, Kevin is allowing his imagination to run wild. He can hear the back and forth dialogue in advance and work out whether he wants to use it. Yeah, but you still have to wonder what Jesus Christ would make of all this. 
Aren't you even curious in the slightest? No, I'm actually starting to be quite impressed with how Kevin took a really limited one paragraph story with no action or plot, and created an entire story using nothing but dialogue about what he's currently doing and how he is doing it. And once again, that is the beauty of storytelling. That is the passion that turns writing into an art form. So write like the wind and never stop thinking. Inspiration is only 99% perspiration. Goddamn this show is fucking awesome. So, what you're trying to tell me is, there's this writer from the other dimension, that somehow controls all of our fates. Is he a god? No. Kevin isn't anybody's fucking god. Fuck that guy. He just knows how to write stories about us. Stories? I thought you said he could control our lives. He can. He's from the other dimension? He just has this thing for going meta all the time. It's finally reached the point where he's honed it down to an art form. But now he's gone too far. Kevin from the other dimension has gone full meta. What? You never go full meta. But he did. But I don't understand. How can Kevin from the other dimension control our fates when I am God? There is no higher power than me. Sir. He writes every word that comes out of our mouths. Have you not noticed that after Oh My God is ended, you yourself went from being wise to being volatile with a twisted sense of humor? That was Kevin's doing. His fucking personality is inflicting on all of us. You even said it yourself when you came to our home to talk about school's technology leak. You said the change wasn't noticeable to us, but it's noticeable to everyone else. And now that applies to you. Do I at least have a better sense of humor? Look, I think what Ward is trying to say is, that we need information on the other dimension. So we can try to get in touch with him and sort this whole thing out. Look kid. You hang out with a Time Lord. I know he's the cheapest, lousiest Time Lord on our staff, but really it should be him you should be talking to, not me. I wasn't even aware of this other dimension until you brought it up. And that's assuming you both aren't insane. Why would we make something like this up? Doctor Watt travels to other dimensions all the time. Surely it must be plausible that this one exists. You know, whenever Doctor Watt is in this situation, he repeatedly tells us to meet him halfway and think outside the box. If surely we must have come this far, then we should be able to do that without Dr. Wood around to supervise us. Okay then. What is your brilliant solution? Is there a way to get a message to Kevin from the other dimension? Not that I'm aware of. If only I knew who he was. The last time when I tried to track down Charlie Day, I at least knew he existed in our universe as an actor. But that's the very reason that he wasn't Dr. Watt. You needed to find him in the other dimension, but you couldn't reach that other dimension, so you had to make do with the Charlie Day from our dimension? That's why it didn't appear to work at first. But it did work. Dr. Watt considered my attempts to find Charlie Day as meeting him halfway, and that's why he appeared. Then who do you think Kevin is in this dimension? He doesn't exist in this universe. And even if he did, it would be the same issue that I had with Charlie Day. If he's not the one from the other dimension, then it doesn't count. But there must be a way to get in touch with him. Actually there is. You're speaking to him now. And before you even ask, allow me to explain. Due to the rules of the universe, Kevin is unable to talk to us himself. But as a writer, he can hijack our dialogue. I know this sounds really too weird right now, but I assure you, Kevin has a point to this. Can I please stop referring to myself in third person now? That is so awkward. Do we need to get an exorcist in here? Hey man, if you think that's scary, imagine how writers in TV shows inflict their own biased opinions through their characters' mouths on a daily basis. Okay Kevin, what's your point? My point is, where does the writer's job as God stop and the illusion of the story start? You're starting to lose me here? That's because you're not thinking outside the box. What I'm doing, by hijacking Keiichi Morisato's dialogue, is conveying a metaphor for religion, and how people always blame God for their own bad life choices. Mankind has always been in inner conflict with God. But through the irony of storytelling, the goddesses of fate are now in inner conflict with a man who controls everything they say and do. It's unintentional on my part, I assure you. People always say that God has a plan. They think they have free will but they really have no control over their lives. But here is the really twisted part. In the art of storytelling, the writer is God. Not on an egotistical, 
morally superior level. I don't think that the writer really wants to be God. I think they just want to tell a story. But the door swings both ways. If the writer is God in the storytelling process, then God, the real God, must herself be the author of life. Okay Xevin, your Charles Xavier act is really starting to creep me out. First off, how is what you're doing not like Agent Smith hijacking people's bodies from the Matrix? Well, once again, that film about the Matrix was a metaphor for the lack of control in our lives. During these stories, the individual Mies have accused Yggdrasil of robbing us of our free wills. But in reality, it's the storytelling process that's doing it. Is there really a point to all this? No, I just felt like rambling and freaking people out. I mean, what the fuck else have I got to do with my evening? It's okay Kevin. Everyone gets bored. Now can we please have our Kichi back? You've had him the whole time. The truth is, that I'm all of you every day when I write one of these things. I'm even yourself. There's a little bit of me in all of you. And I'm sorry if you feel robbed of Fujishima's optimistic outlook on life in these stories, but that tends to happen when you change writers. For now, my stories are the best I can do given my limited writing skills. But hey, everybody's got to start somewhere, right? Chevin. Dude. You went full meta. You never go full meta. Stop making stories like these. Focus on comedies for now without all the self-referencing interdimensional scenes. Maybe practice on writing women for a change, you can't screw that up forever. I'm sorry, I blanked out for a second. What were you asking me again? Don't worry about it Kichi. I've got all the answers I need now. Let's go home.